Another aspect to understand about Second Life is that it is part of the development of Web 2.0. The growing popularity, some say dominance, of websites based on social networking and user-generated content. You're probably familiar with some of the more famous and infamous, MySpace and YouTube especially. But don't forget Facebook with its 90 million users, and Twitter, and Flickr, and all the wikis you can shake a wiki at, blogs and vlogs, even social bookmarking sites like Digit and Delicious. The big breakthrough for Second Life came with its shift from a gaming model to social collaboration and user-generated content. Although Second Life was not the first virtual universe, it was the first to stake its future on user-generated content. Philip Rosedale, the founder and first CEO, simply made his content creation tools available for free and also gave the user copyright of everything the user created. The result was an absolute explosion of interest and creativity in this world. Virtually everything you see and do in Second Life was created by its users. And the fact that these residents own copyrights to their creations means that they can sell what they make to other members. Scripts for avatars, all kinds of prims, and thus was born the self-generating economy of Second Life, which runs on Linden dollars. Indeed, there's a growing number of residents who have left their daytime jobs and now work full-time in Second Life, providing goods and services to its residents. Here is a short machinima that shows a master at work going from a completely empty space to the recreation of a famous world using nothing but the simple creation tools of Second Life. First, you will see terraforming, shaping the ground with the terraforming tool. Then, you will see prim sculpting. Prim is an abbreviation for primitive, and a prim is like a block of clay, squares, ovals, donuts, triangles, that's it. So these prims are then fashioned into everything you see and can imagine in Second Life. Yeah. 